What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Oh, hi there, YouTube! I'm back here today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to be checking out Funglish from Hasbro. This is for ages 12 plus. It's for three plus players. It will take as long as time as you want to play it to play it because it does have as many players as you want. But in Funglish, you are going to be trying to describe words by putting out words to get your uh, opponents to try and guess those words. Words, words, I'm going to use them to describe the game, I'm going to use them to tell you what I think about it, so let's just go ahead and open it up so I don't have to say any more words. Alrighty then, we're taking a look at what you're going to get inside of Funglish. So first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule sheet. It's one page, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's really well done. I'll have you up and running in no time at all, and I can teach you how to play the game right now because it is such a simple game. So, I do also want to mention that you can see I'm doing this from a different camera angle. That's because there is a lot of setup in this game. There are tons of tiles. There are 120 tiles. So, in Funglish, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be, uh, you're going to take turns being the, uh, the guessee. So, you're going to be trying to get people to guess various different words that are going to be on these cards right here. And each card is going to have six words on it. Uh, you're going to be doing that by taking a look at all these adjectives out here, which are separated into different categories. So this one's like colors and colorful and clear and stripy. This one is uh, beautiful, funny, famous, yummy, sexy, lovable, all sorts of stuff like that. Over here you got sick, yucky, creepy, sour, illegal. Uh, you got big, fat, tall, small, weedy. Lots of different adjectives out here. I do recommend you set them out in alphabetical order. I did not for the sake of this review, which might make things a little bit interesting. So let's take a look at our board right here. And the board is going to come apart, and it's really nifty. It's actually component-wise a very nice board. I forgot to mention this in the components. Uh, it's going to be three categories. There will be definitely, kind of, and not. And you're going to be placing as many as you want of the different things right here. So for instance, if the word was robot, I might have definitely a machine, definitely electric, definitely man-made, kind of dead, not Edible. You can use from as many different categories as you want. And you know, I might put up metal right here, uh, not soft. And then hopefully, you know, as you're going, people are going to be able to guess what that is. And when they do successfully guess it, you are going to get one point, and you will move on to another word that is on your card. Now, how the scoring works is, if you can successfully get someone to guess a word that you're doing, you're going to get a point, and that person is going to get a point. Uh, so let's take a look, and I'll just run you through a mock round so you can see how it's going to do. Now, the sand timer is about three minutes, as it says in the rule booklets. I find that humorous. They don't just say three minutes, but about three minutes. So let's set this up, and hopefully we can get one or two correct. So we'll draw a card, and we'll see what we got, and then we'll flip the sand timer. So we'll just go ahead, and we'll start with, say, envelope. So I would say that it is definitely paper. It is very thin, you know. And you can't be saying this. You actually are supposed to be very quiet when you do it. The only help you're allowed to do is if someone's on the right track, you can kind of point at them and say, yeah, you know, kind of keep going. Uh, let's say uh, it is ooh, uh, kind of sticky. You know, there's sticky on there. It is um, not a machine, you know. <laughs> and as you can see, you're going to be trying to get people to guess the words, but it's very difficult from time to time. And about halfway through, you'd be like, all right, this is really difficult. I'm done with this one, and I'm going to go on to say licorice. So we go on to licorice. We want we want yummy. We want yummy, and we want sweet. So this is where it's kind of killing me that I don't have it in alphabetical order. So it's definitely sweet, and it is long. Yeah, it's kind of long, kind of long, kind of wavy. They're kind of wavy, right? It's also kind of square. And at this point, I'm probably confusing everyone playing the game. It can be definitely red, but it also can be black. I mean, it really can come in any color, so that's really not that good of a clue. Uh, but anywho, as you can see, you're going to go until the sand timer has ran out. You're going to give everybody their points. And then the next person is going to take their turn being the guess E and giving out the clues. You'll go until everyone's had a turn or until you've, uh, you've decided on X amount of rounds or X amount of points, at which point 
one person will be the winner of Funglish, and that in a nutshell is how the game is played. Now, one more thing I forgot to mention, and this is uh, will make it a lot easier, is when you are doing this board, there actually will be two people doing the board, uh, and that does make it substantially easier. I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning. However, if you're playing with an odd number, they recommend only using one person, or if you're really experienced at the game, they recommend using only one person. I still say poppycock. You should not do that because, because it is very difficult to do it. But that, now in a nutshell, is how Funglish is played. Alrighty then, Bunglish from Hasbro. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go to the cons. First on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody. The game does have faults. Uh, one of the big faults is, I don't like the fact that the font on some of them is difficult to read. Like, they tried to make the game a little bit th more thematic by, like, making the word furry kind of furry, and the word sweet, and, like, this cute little, you know, italics, and, like, and it makes it a little bit more difficult to read, especially when you get into the higher player counts, because you're going to have to have the board, and everyone's going to be able to need to see the board. And when you get to the higher player counts, it's going to be more difficult to see the board. Now, granted, that's a small problem, because you can say, it's definitely this, or, you know, someone else can read it off as well. Also, some people are not going to like the fact that um, most of the time, and, and I do recommend playing this way, you're going to have two people doing the words. They're going to want to do it themselves. And, and most of the time, that's people who have never played the game before. You really kind of do need two people to do it, because it's actually really difficult sometimes to get people to guess words. Because... As many adjectives as there are out here, it's still really hard. And the only thing you're allowed to do is like point to people as they get closer to getting correct. But it can get frustrating when you're trying to like get people to guess the thing, and you're looking for the words, and you're like, ah! And then someone else, maybe maybe your partner who's up here with you, who's not really your partner, but your kind of partners because you both want to score the points, plays. Uh, a tile and you disagree with that tile and you're just stuck with it because you can't really talk too much, it has a little bit of a frustration level and it's a lot more difficult than you want it to be. Uh, another comment I have with this game is that while the components are great and everything about this game looks aesthetically pleasing and it looks uh, fun, it's a nuisance to set out all the words because there are tons and tons and tons of these tiles if you cannot tell. There's probably close to a hundred or something here. Let me see. There's a hundred and twenty of these tiles and you need to separate them out by color. You really do have to separate them out by color and then if you want to have a, a better game, and this is something that I do recommend, you need to put them in alphabetical order which is even more tedious because you're going to be spending time setting up the game, and that's just something you don't want to do, especially with a light party game. With, you know, complex, you know, three-hour games, it's like setting up the game is not a big deal. If I'm playing Twilight and Pilgrim 3rd Edition, I don't mind spending 35 minutes to set up the game. If I'm playing Funglish, I don't want to have to spend five minutes setting up the game, or ten minutes if you do it alphabetically. And it will take you that long to do, which is a little bit of a nuisance. Any other cons that I have with the game? No. Moving on to the pros, I do. I enjoy Funglish, and I would put this as a step up over a lot of your typical mass market Hasbro, Milton Bradley, Mattel party games. You know, you got like your Quells and your Catch 22s and your, your Factor Craps, your Apples to Apples, and I like this better than just about all those games, maybe up there with Apples to Apples. Because it is really interesting, and it is really challenging. Uh, and, you know, you can score points either way, either when you're doing this part or when you're trying to watch other people, you know, try and get you to guess the words. So everyone's going to be actively involved at all times, which is essential to a party game. There's not really much downtime. Aside from when you're first setting up the game, there's not much downtime. So the game does go relatively quickly. It plays pretty well at about all the different player counts. I mean, uh, three players is still fun to try and get people to guess the different words. Four players, five players, six players. I think we played it all the way up to... I think we had 12 people at a Christmas party playing this. And it went over really well. And that's another thing I'm going to mention. Uh, and I forgot to mention this in the cons. As a game night game, you're probably going to want to steer clear. It's still a little bit too simplistic for a game night. But as a game night for people who don't really play hobby games, I think they're really going to get a kick out of this one because it's a little bit more brain burning. It's a little bit more challenging than your typical party games. Take a look at a game like Factor Crap, where it's just, oh, true or false. That's the whole extent of the game. This game really poises more of a challenge, and I think some people are really going to dig that. Uh, also, I think this is a great 
teaching tool as well. I think this would be a really fun game to bring into a classroom. Uh, I'd say as early as, honestly, there's there's not really too many complicated words here. As early as, say, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, this could be a great word to help broaden uh, a child's vocabulary, and I like that. So, overall, Funglish uh, from, from Hasbro, it has its faults, but definitely compared to your typical mass market uh, trivia games out there, this is going to be a fun little party game that I think if you can find it for cheap in a thrift shop, which most likely is where you're going to find it, this is definitely one you might want to check out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click out the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what is your favorite drink. Strip away the calories, strip away, you know, whether or not it's a masculine or a feminine drink. What is your absolute favorite drink? For me personally, it is probably... Ooh, I like cranberry and vodka. I really do. I just give me a cranberry and vodka all day. You know, I know that sounds like a very feminine drink, but I just love it. It tastes so good to get, especially if you get the good vodka. But let me know in the comments below what is your favorite drink, and as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.